don't know many details about the Josh Giddy situation. But oh, what we do know is, man. bro, this is a late show. We talk about whatever we want. Josh Giddy. But we, apparently, he fucking it Josh up for the whole Giddey NBA. Had a relationship with a minor, and the NBA is investigating it. What do you think the NBA should do? Well, if he's guilty or if he's not. If he's guilty, he should be banned from the NBA. Let's see if they can cash in. Uh, I want to ask you to guide us on this great season. Give us strength, wisdom, and courage to give the best podcast ever. Amen. 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 Let's do it, bro. Season two, The Late Show. Let's make it happen. Welcome to The Late Show, season two. We are Who's back, that? bro. I haven't seen you in like months. It's been a minute. You look good though. How you doing, bro? I'm good, bro. How Thank are you? you? I'm great. Got a good workout in this morning. Yeah, I saw that. Feel good. You're wearing those bull shorts though. We gotta get you some Lakers. Shorts. Yeah, I got some Laker gear coming. How, how do you like the new studio? That's a dope pick, bro. It is. I'm feeling it. You got some dope pictures up here. Yeah, well, we have to make it, you know, very Laker vibe heavy. So uh, yeah, in this in this week's episode, we're gonna talk about Darvin Ham and the criticism he's received. Lakers, Why Bulls, trade rumors. My man, Darvin Ham. Bro, we'll get on him because Laker fans are on him. But Lakers, Bulls, trade rumors, the in season tournament, the Josh Giddy situation, um, reacting Josh. to James Harden calling Daryl Moy a liar, and uh, trending news in the NBA. So it's been a couple of months, like I said. Well, what's new, bro? What's on your mind? Like, how you been? Like, life before we talk about Lakers? Um, Before we talk about the Lakers, life is great. Trying to open these recovery centers and trying to save people who can't save themselves. Um, just working hard, bro. Yeah, Every day, yeah. How many centers do you have so far? Oh uh, well, I'm my the um the company I do business. They have nine of them. Nine. Okay, so you're, yeah. Oh, you so you I'm required? in business with I'm in business with nine of them, but I don't have my own yet. I gotcha. want my own, I want my own. That's amazing though, bro. Honestly, yeah. like that you're doing that because I know what you went through and like you want to, you know, use your experience to help other people. Just give back, bro. That's what it's great, about. Bro. Um, that's great. Uh, how do you feel about the Lakers right now? Twenty one games in, we're twelve and nine. You know, I haven't really had a statement win yet, but we are twelve and nine. Um Guard James. I love Guard James, but they don't really have that's why I'm wearing this Kooji today, because I'm representing <laughs> the older players in the NBA. He's the best older players ever. 39 but at the end of this month. 39 at the end of this month. Shout out to God James. But we don't really have an identity, right? Not yet. The identity um, last year when they went on that run was defense. Right. So if they're not playing defense up I mean, to that lost, level. We lost like Schroeder though. We lost Schroeder. Um, I mean, we still have Reeves. We try to retain our core. That was like kind of what Rob Blinka tried to stress. Like, yo, we want to keep our core. Like bring D'Lo back, Rui back. You know, played well in the playoffs. Yeah. Obviously, LeBron and AD are here. Um, yeah, what do you think of our new signings? We got Torian. We got, like, you know, Jackson Hayes. Um, you know, we, we added, I think we added some good pieces. So, what do you think so far? I uh, was like, they're just good, but it's like, it's nothing great. You know what I mean? Or nothing eye catching. They're pretty inconsistent. I mean, at you this know what point, I mean? or nobody can change or, or, or really. Help guard James consistently at a high level. What about AD? Size AD. And then we're still like iffy on him. Like when is he going to play? Because I seen highlights of the um, Philadelphia game <laughs> and Joel Embiid impaled him twice <laughs> in a post. Like made it impos almost impossible to miss the layup. Yeah. And um. That wasn't a good sight for me. I don't, I don't know how uh, you watch your best defensive player get impaled twice, like scream help, or <laughs> or, or, or or see him I mean, get impaled. Like Embiid, though, I know. you didn't play against Embiid, right? Yeah, like, yeah, I did, but he wasn't. I don't think he was that big and that ferocious. He's also the reigning MVP. Yeah, he's definitely got bigger. So when I, I um, we were at the game, I was at the game, and I was like, bro, seeing this guy in person, he's nasty. But too. I don't want to give AD excuses, bro. Like AD, you want to be the defensive player of the year. Yeah, like, you got to just get. Got to match that intensity. Yeah, yeah, bro. I got that ferociousness. He doesn't. That's the thing with AD. I feel like I'm making an assumption, but I feel like you know a lot of the off court 
things that happen in his life affect the way he comes and approaches the game. Like sometimes he'll come to the game, like he'll be super locked in, he'll have like 35 points, 15 rebounds, and they'll win. Then you'll see he'll take nine shots the next the next game. And like he'll be extremely disengaged and like disconnected from what's going on. Like, do you think it has I mean, to be it can, it, can, it can happen, but that's a lot of um pressure on yourself if you're a Laker and you don't like really love to compete. And you're that good? So I'm saying everyone talks about he's the most frustrating superstar to watch. He's so inconsistent. Like, because when he's on, bro, you saw what happened. The Lakers won a championship, right? Yes, they have like a good team. But they needed AD. It definitely takes a team to win a championship. Yeah, I want to talk about Darvin Ham because like, he's like. Why are they getting on my man Darvin Ham? He, he was he was the man last year. <laughs> right? True, but he ain't start off. They didn't start off hot, so now it's fuck Darvin Ham, huh? I mean, they started own five, two and ten last year. This year they started. They're they're twelve and nine. They're clearly better than they were last year up on this point. But people are like just the meme with Darvin Ham hands in his pocket. Like everyone just like call a timeout. Your rotations are shit. He is the scapegoat. He's the Russell Westbrook of this season. Like, Austin Reeves doesn't start anymore, huh? No. He wasn't he didn't have a great start of the season. They put in reddish. He's playing well. He got injured. But what's your take? Like Laker fans want to hear what your opinion is on Darvin Ham. I don't think it's his fault. I mean, that bullshit offense they run. I don't know what they run. It's not the triangle. <laughs> uh, it ain't it ain't the triangle. Tell him I'm Darvin Ham. I got diagrams to the triangle in my house. <laughs> I'll drop him off. It's still time for you to use him. That'll help. Darvin Ham, if you're watching this. But, um, <laughs> and that's no cap. I definitely got him in my house. Um, I don't know what they run. So what do you think the problem is? The biggest problem. Obviously, the Lakers haven't been healthy. They're starting to get healthy now. But what do you think is the biggest problem? I don't think it's Darvin Ham. In the West? Just like for the Lakers. The Lakers, you know, they're 12 and 9. And Laker fans want to be 21 and 0. So it's like. They don't have enough talent. Really? So you're saying if the Lakers are fully healthy. You got to go get Zach Levine. Go get a superstar. So go get somebody that can fly through the roof. Get the crowd off their feet. Hit some threes. Some young legs. So you would say. Take take some, take some a load off of LeBron. You know what I mean? The 80s, that's what 80s for. Yeah, but, you know. So you would say. You might, as well just mix, might as well just mix up some highlights with that. If we ain't going to get that. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? mean? Some, some, some fast breaks. Imagine him and LeBron running the fast break I together. Know. It'll be fun, but this is the thing, bro. You know this better than anyone. And you got to put your balls out. Like, you take a risk. You need role players, though. So what? you want to trade Zach Levine. Try to keep Hachimura. Okay, so let me, let go, me read you go this. Go get Zach Levine and, and try to keep Hachimura. So let me probably ask. probably going to have to give up. Who are you probably going to have to give up? So this is, these are the reported trades that the Lakers, you know, the potential framework. So Zach Levine. So would you do Zach Levine and Alex Crusoe for D'Lo, Rui, Gabe Vincent, Chifino and our first round pick in 2029. Definitely doing D'Angelo Russell, Gabe Benson, Chifino, and the pick for 29. I'm trying to keep Hachimura in that trade. So you would take Rui out, and then you you're ready to give up D'Lo. I don't really, yeah because I want to play. I mean, I like, D'Lo is a hell of a player, hell of a talent. You know what I mean? Left handed, one of my favorite players to watch. But like to make that playoff, we saw what happened last year. Run. We saw what happened. Last I don't time. know if he's gonna defend and play make first and then score. I don't know I if he's you. born into that as a point guard. So if we trade him, who's gonna be our point guard? Zach Levine. Like we have guard James. We got Come guard on. James to be the point guard. Anytime you got four other players on the court, LeBron James could be the point guard. And then if True. you get the triangle offense, <laughs> you don't need a, a traditional point guard. I hear that. Um, what what about swapping Levine for DeRozan? Let's say DeRozan and Caruso. Or DeRozan. DeRozan's Who would you rather more of have? Zach Levine. The legs are younger. Yeah, but Debo is way more clutch than him. I feel like we need that guy. You think LeBron is? Yeah, I mean, I think either. I think either. I think you got to go after either or, really, to be so honest I, with you. I want to make this straight. You are ready to trade our depth for a third star. You think that's what the Lakers need? They're not. They don't have enough talent as is to win a championship. I don't think so. Honestly, I get it. I don't think so. But you, you know, you gotta no. you gotta score. I get you can't it. Can't be going through like these shooting slumps. You gotta have that guys that can put it in the basket. No, I get it. Honestly, I think <laughs> in today's NBA, I know you need you need like it's a you know 
You need scorers. You need people who are going to put the ball in the basket. But I also we need think, AD to be AD. Every bro, night. I think we need our. What's boy just got married or something? What's up with he's him? married, I think. Yeah, he's married. He has some kids. Newlywed. Pretty new. Pretty new. But he's, you know he's off social media now. So like, whatever that means, he doesn't see Lakers all day, every day, post anymore. Oh man, because he was following. It was that traumatic, huh? It wasn't my fault though. I think you made you said the Lakers should trade him, and he got upset. Did he get upset? I don't know. That's what he did. I don't know. But uh, no, honestly, my take is I. And think- you know what though? I think they should <laughs> trade him. Ad. Fuck it. If you don't, if you don't know, <laughs> if you somebody's that good, and you don't know if they're gonna come, why keep them? And you can get a shit. You can get some players for AD. You can get two great players, good players. Trauma, you can get Zach Levine for sure. Maybe without putting a pick in there, but but don't you think LeBron needs a big superstar? Like let's say he has a superstar that's a guard. How like you need a a big a solidify your defense and offense. Like LeBron's gonna do what why he's gonna it, do. We can go get bigs, but why do they have to be? They don't have to be an offensive superstar to be a defensive superstar. So who do you have in mind? Like who do you think would be a good like if you want to trade AD? Like who do you who would you expect in return? To what team am I trading them to? Bro, it's open. Any anyone you want. Like realistic, you're not gonna go get Joel and Bead. But I'm saying like you want to craft the championship team. Who do you think the Lakers should go after? Greek Freak. <laughs> that would be nice. They would probably need LeBron and AD though. If you want to get the Greek Freak, but AD. I don't know. But I think the Lakers shouldn't go after a third star. I get what you're saying, but I, the Lakers need depth. So you want to, so you want to come in here every day. I mean, every day and, and be, we'll have a lot, of, lot to talk about. Bro, this is not Legacy, a thing of Legacy. like you take one side, I take the other. It's like I think the Lakers need a a team with depth. What happens to the bench? Like you saw what happened to the Suns last year. They have a really good starting five, but who is their bench? Like janitors. Like the, the, no one knows who these guys are, and that's why they didn't win in the playoffs. I think the Lakers need like they need their their depth. If you want to trade D'Lo, Rui, Gabe to get Zach Levine and Crusoe, who who you gotta fill in these guys with like buyout market or like scrubs? That's the truth. So I don't know. I think honestly, we're twenty one games in. Talk to me a little bit later in the season, and maybe it'll change. You know, we're we're about to get healthy right now. Vincent is the only guy that's out tonight versus Suns. Who's playing? Is what's the name playing? Um, what's my man? Uh, Vanderbilt. He just got back. He played he's one back. game. He didn't score, but he's rusty. I mean, like, but yeah, I agree. We haven't had, we haven't been healthy. One more trade for you, and we'll move on. Would you do Alex Caruso for Gabe Vincent, Hutchifino, and a first round pick swap? So like, not really a third star, but like a really solid elite role player. Alex Caruso and gave up two plays, but they don't even play Hutchifino, right? Hutchifino. No, I wouldn't do that. And a and a and a pick, a uh, pick swap, a first round pick swap, like they'll have whoever has a higher pick they'll get, but imagine Caruso and Austin Reeves on the same team, that's like Shaq and Kobe, <laughs> the white version. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's like bread and bread. So you wouldn't do it? No. All right, we gotta talk about the in season tournament. The Lakers. I like the in season tournament. They're playing tonight. The Suns. Whoever has wins a, going to Vegas. Has an NCAA vibe. The NCAA. I mean, the uh, in season tournament. I mean, you saw what happened last night. It's a good money maker for the NBA. They know how to make their money. They're also giving half a million dollars to every player on the team. Yeah, that's good. They got it to give. So, do you think like, let's say you were in the NBA, and I know you said you've made as much as fourteen million in a year. I don't know what the least you've made in a year was, but like no, eight million. I think was the most I made. Mean, you made it, okay, yeah. yeah so yeah. like, there's guys that make that kind of money. There's guys that make forty million. There's guys that make a couple million. But money is money. Everybody wants to have five hundred money. You think players dollars. care that much about five hundred k? Hell yeah. Especially if you're a good teammate, you want the dudes that's that don't make a lot of money to get that money. It's like, what do you think? Le- do you think LeBron actually thinks I about mean, other ain't, players? Ain't not. not for himself. I'm saying like what you just said. Oh, yeah. there's guys on the team that make a million dollars a year. Hundred percent. If he's a captain and he loves his teammates and he want to win. So if the Lakers win tonight, are we going to Vegas? 100%. Because I'll be there. Yeah. I was going to ask you. Who are they playing in Vegas? The winner they will what? play the Pelicans. They just beat the, the Kings last night. So the winner of Lakers Suns tonight will play the Pelicans. We got them. 
You got to win tonight, though, right? It's going to be tough. Booker, KD, Beal's not playing, but... I was going to ask you, what do you think? Like, do you think the players want to go to Vegas? Do you think they care? Hell yeah. That's like a end-season vacation for everybody. But bro, these Wives, guys have family. games. What'd you say? These guys have games. Are you going to go out? <laughs> Hell yeah, you going out. It's Vegas. Like, what do you mean going out? Like, going to, like... Club, everything. <laughs> Strip club, you're hitting it up. You don't get to go to Vegas and see. Use that 500K that you win, you know, blow I'm it just, all that yeah, night. I'm blowing it in Vegas. <laughs> I know I would. If I win, <laughs> I'm blowing it. But that's a good That's a good look. Uh, Dylan Brooks and LeBron. So LeBron actually defended Dylan Brooks and said he deserved the contract he got with the Rockets. And then you still see Dylan Brooks, like, you know, trying to create beef. But the, the three matchups the Lakers have had, what two is, out of the three, LeBron's really like taking the shit on Dylan Brooks, like in, in all capacities. Like, what do you what do you think about you know Dylan Brooks? Like, what what do you think his mindset is? Like, why is he trying to come at LeBron when he knows this is LeBron James and you have Dylan Brooks? I mean, it's kind of crazy that an NBA player, I guess, wants to become stay relevant and become more famous. <laughs> People are saying he's trying to become a you know part I mean? of the documentary. And then if you you know. Like, getting hits on social media can't hurt. But it's only made him look bad. His ego, but he got, he's obviously he's a little sick. He don't care how he looks as long as he gets a look. I mean, he got his money. You know what I mean? He got money from it. You know. I'm saying LeBron actually endorsed him. LeBron was LeBron like, took the high road. Because, I mean, you know, you can't really compare the player. You know what I mean? Why do you think he did that? What? Like LeBron has nothing else to I mean, prove. Because so obviously he's him, obviously he's a better player than him. Yeah, you know what I mean? know. So he I'm don't really like, got to say it. I'm saying like, why don't you think he like was like, nah, fuck it, I have time. Like I'm gonna go at him. What on the court? No, he he went at him on the court. Of course 100% he went. Of he course he him went, down. He's like doing everything. Of course he went at him on the court. But <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> I mean, he's a you know. But yeah, then you have people like you know Beverly coming at Reeves. Like people thought they were all sweet and chill, and then you see what happened in the Sixers game. Like he. Checked him for sure. Didn't say. Yeah, it. but Reeves locked. I mean, Pat Beverly locked him up. What's your that, take on that? That was just the spirit of competition right there. I, I love to see that. The NBA needs more of that, really. You don't think he took it too far? Nah. They didn't fight. They didn't punch him in the face. Nothing like I that. I mean, he he claimed that Austin Reeves started it. He was like, yo, he, he called me too little in my own city in Chicago. He did. So he ain't forget that. See, some players don't forget. The dogs don't forget. And Pat Beverly, obviously, is a dog. What do you think about, you know, Pat as a player? He doesn't put up the greatest stats, but he doesn't have I'll, that effect on the floor. Yeah, I like him as a player because he affects the game in his own way without scoring, too. So in today's game, that's hard to do. That takes um, heart. What do you think about his defense? Effort and energy. He definitely has those, those two things, and that's what it takes to play defense. What were you saying and about a mindset him takes like, a, a, yeah, what were you like saying about like American players? Yeah, I, I wish the American players that, you know, I've, I've seen the offensive game evolve. I've seen these dudes put, you know, dribble combinations, then wrap the ball around their back, then shoot threes, and everybody's like a big time shot maker, but I don't really see these dudes stepping up on defense. So I kind of admire um, Pat Beverly just, you know, just keep that, um, that old school mentality um, I think is good for the game. Guys like Draymond Green. Right. Um, yeah, but yeah, Draymond doing things that... Beverly, Patrick Beverly. It's like, bro... With the Ron Artest mindset. But I'm saying, you have I Draymond think, Green I think choking I'm, a guy out. It's like that. I don't know. That was, that, he was wrong, dead wrong for that. Ain't no room, ain't no room bro, he in, takes in the game far. for that. You know what I'm saying? And he but, kicks people in the, in the nuts, in too. The nuts, yeah, like, but just to fuck that. You might be better than me, but I bet you I get to stop right now. I think American right. basketball need that. Like you're saying European has more of that you know, I think it may have to do with refs, though. Refs don't tough. let it go. They well, don't let it happen. It's tough. Well, the game is called differently out here. You know, they call it more. You get to play a little bit more physical um, overseas. Right. But, you know, you just got to find a way. Who are the biggest trash talkers you've ever encountered? Kevin Garnett. And Gary <laughs> Payne. <laughs> Kevin Garnett and Gary Payne. Do you have, like, a certain instance where, you know, this has been crazy to you? Oh, I remember we was playing. Well, I was playing with the um, with the Clippers. Boo! And <laughs> and um, it was like, was it before the game or during the game? You know, we had a real young team, real athletic team. 
And like we was all like everybody was getting dunks and all that. And Kevin, Kevin, I was like Kevin Garnett was grabbing his, you know, grabbing his dick. He was like, ooh, <laughs> ooh, these motherfuckers getting my dick hard. <laughs> they out here dunking and shit. <laughs> You're saying like during the game or like before the game? Yeah, I, th- I don't remember if it was before the game or during the game. But I remember Said him, that to you. He was just yeah, he was just like grabbing his dick, like ooh. Oh my! They God, out here bro. dunking and shit. They getting my dick off. <laughs> so was that was he on the Wolves or Celtics? Yeah, on the Wolves. What about some? I feel like he had to have to say some says something crazy like but I mean, finals, yeah, he, like yeah, Lakers I mean, Celtics. He compete at a high level. Bro. And I can't really remember all the things that he said in particular, but. Anything might come out. Well, you would think about him the night before a match nah, was in, like. Yeah, I mean, you know it's gonna be tough, but wasn't nobody like if I was saying, are you circling him on the calendar? Like, yo, I'm playing the Celtics, I'm gonna I'm taking on Garnett or like Perkins tonight, tomorrow night. I mean, I didn't really have nobody that I was I know you said Zach Randall. But it's some yeah. guys that I like I knew, you know. You know, you're gonna play against Garnett well, on Wednesday, you definitely Getting ready. Right. That makes sense. That Monday. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, for real. Like, Bro, we, honestly, it would be dope if we had him on the pod. Like, I feel like you guys- He's doing podcasts now, too, He has right? his own podcast. Yeah, KD him, certified. Him and um, Paul Pierce. I seen it. Are they together? They're yeah. together? Yeah. So, I mean, that would be cool. Like, you guys talk about, you know, you guys were clearly rivals. He was intense. In like, a moment. I'm sure he has some great- Do you guys have some great stories together? I don't remember. I don't really- only person I think I ever played against or been on the court with that was that intense was Kobe Bryant. Yeah, I mean, like play to play, was. play to play. Right. Yeah, just like it's different. Yeah. We'll talk about a couple more things. I, I'm going to preface this by saying we don't know many details. About the Josh Giddy situation. But oh, what we do know is, man. bro, this is a late show. We talk about whatever we want. Josh Giddy. But we, apparently, he fucking it Josh up for the Giddy whole NBA. is having a relationship or had a relationship with a minor, and the NBA is investigating it. So I'm going to ask you, what do you think the NBA should do? Assuming, you know, things are confirmed and that he was with an underage woman. Well, if he's guilty or if he's not? If he's guilty. If he had sex with someone that's 16 years old or un- under seven, 17 years old? I think he's under 18. He should be banned from the NBA. For life? Yeah. Because he's 21 years old right now. And like he's clearly like... What, so let him back in? Not that it matters. Let him back in after 20 No, not that it matters. that having a good... Not that it matters. I'm saying I'm brought you up give that... give him 8 to 5? No, I brought up that point. <laughs> 3 to 5? Like, I brought up that point because it's not like it's some 15? guy who's not going to last in the league. He's clearly like a good talent, but like I agree. Like yeah. if he... Give I don't know eight, about a man for life. Uh, let's just say assuming he did... He whoa, did whoa, do whoa, it. Whoa, whoa, Bro... First of all, no, first of all, he will be... If, if it's true... If it is true, I'm hoping that it's not. Of course. I don't. I hope it's for not his true sake. too. And his family's sake. If it is true. It's just so hard to say that because we've had things like, I don't think we've ever, we've ever had this problem in the NBA. I know we've had guns. We've no, had like, domestic never, violence. Yeah, you never. there's been big punishments. But like, and there's been a lot of cock slaying in the NBA. <laughs> no, but you're right. there hasn't been a, a lady underage ever coming out. And I know it's probably happened before. But people don't know what we think because there's been sexual assault, and like you see how people, like you know, Miles Bridges, like domestic, like there's things that happen, no one's even gotten close to like over a season. I know, she I'm was saying, young. I'm asking you, I'm saying, I don't, I, I really don't know. They, they will have to suspend them for a lifetime because you know, all the so you're banning him, you're not all the, you're banning him, all the groups, right? They it wouldn't be able to, they say, well, what did we suspend him for a year? They'd be like, that's not long enough, right. There will always be it's like, yo, this guy had a, a relationship with the under. I get it. They would have to suspend him for a lifetime. Bro. Adam Silver. Hopefully is in a tough that doesn't. Situation. Hopefully he doesn't have to smash that gavel down on that case. I hope we'll, not. We'll see. But honestly. if he did, what would you suspend him for? I mean, after you saying for life, if it's like Commissioner Cohen. It's because like if you, <laughs> I'm saying if you like, you can't suspend a guy for. Two years. It's like you either suspend him for uh, for life or you suspend him for like four games. No, I'm not saying. That's what I'm saying. Like 
honestly, if you put it that way, if it's four games or life, I'd probably say life. This isn't. It's like it's like that's illegal too. It's like it's not it's like an NBA thing. It's First an of FBI all, thing as well. If he did it, right? You can't be in the NBA and a criminal. There's also the thing. Wait, that, hold on. You heard what you said? Uh, it's an you FBI thing. It's, that's FBI, a, it's like illegal that's a criminal activity. Case. No, I get it. So they might be like he might, you know, be trying to fight off jail time. Right. Now you're right. Right. No, that, I mean, and like, that's somebody's daughter. That's the thing. We don't know details. Like, maybe she, like, I'm not saying this happened, but maybe she had, like, you know, they're in a bar. And we, I've seen videos, like, they're in a bar. And, like, you she can't. She might have lied. Like, where so where how, was she? How'd it go down? That's all I'm going to say. I don't know. I don't know. I, I just want to get your take, like, on a suspension. Let's say it did happen. So, yeah, I mean, that's kind of crazy. And we'll see what happens because we, we saw what happened with Jaw. We saw what happened with Porter Jr., with Bridges. Like, nothing too crazy. Like, 25 games talk for Jaw is the, pretty crazy. Talk about the wake up call for the whole, for every. Maybe he'll be the example. Kick Male the player in the NBA, though. Right. Who's slinging cock on the also, road. Also, let's say he doesn't even get banned. Like, he'll probably blackballed. You know, like... He, yeah, you fuck somebody. Right. Or was he it's even like, thinking about fucking somebody 16, right. 17? Right, no, I hear you. Yeah. Scumbag you. Last thing we'll talk about is the Harden and Maury drama. So, basically, for those who don't know, Harden called Daryl Maury the GM... Uh, well, what were they doing? That they, what were they doing that they were that close? Where the owner promises a player a max contract? Well, you're James Harden. You're an elite player. You just like if you're told you're gonna get a max contract. Well, you what, know, he, and, what he said. He said Daryl Moore told me I'm gonna get a max contract, and then he, and then he didn't give it to me. He's a liar. He said to the camera, his face to the camera. Daryl Moore is a liar. I don't want to play for him. And he went to the Clippers. Okay. Well, so what do you think about that? What? Like, what's your take? Like, well, I mean, well, if if that really happened, then Daryl Morey was wrong, and James Harden got what he wanted. Move on. Like, but this is the thing, bro. He's always had a problem with GMs. Brooklyn, he had a problem. Rockets, they gave him everything he needed. He wanted to leave. They gave him everything he wanted. They wanted. He wanted to leave. You know, Brooklyn, like I said, one of the greatest teams ever. Like that big three, if they were healthy, whatever, left. And now he went to the Sixers. Had with Embiid, Maxi, a great team. So that's what people are saying. Like, Harden is the problem. So like, that's the thing. Well, I think every man comes to a point in their life where if the same thing keeps going wrong in your life, you're going to look in the mirror and be like... That's what people are saying. He's not doing that. You know what I mean? So was there ever a disconnect it might, between it might you? Be, it might be a mature, a maturity issue. With Harden, you're saying? Play. Yeah. It's all right to be immature. I mean, he's like a grown man, though. But, you know what I mean? But when you're immature and they're giving you $100 million, then that's the problem. Right. It's not like he's a rookie. It's not like he's a 20-year-old. Yeah. He's in his 30s. It's not like a John Rant. Like... Oh, he's a talented motherfucker, though. Who, James? Yeah. I got him down. What do you think about the Clippers Second right best now? left-handed player ever. Ever? Yeah. Who's number one? Tiny Archibald. Who? Tiny Archibald. Who's that? I was born in 99. I don't know this stuff. Look it up. <laughs> Tiny? Look it up. His stats. That's a pro. Tiny Ochoald? Yeah. I don't even know how to spell that. Nate Tiny. T-I-N-Y. Archibald. A-R-C-H-I-B-A-L-D. Oh, Archibald. Nate Archibald. Yeah. Is he in the Hall of Fame? Well, I type in Nate Archibald. It's telling me that he works in Gossip Girl business. No. Basketball. Right and bro, I used... Oh, well, here. This? Well, if an actor is coming before him, he's probably not that good. He averages 18 points a game, and I'm not sold. How many championships does he have? None. All right, Harden's better than him. him. And, him oh, and, actually, him wait. Oh, he's in the Hall of Fame. He's a six-time All-Star. Five. Oh, he's pretty good. It's only 5'10". He made the seven. He made the NBA all seven. I'm sorry for all the older people That's that okay. are watching the show. I, yeah, I'm yeah, ignorant. No. I'll, let you be, I'll let you live. Okay, so I want to ask you, was there ever a disconnect like that between you and the Lakers front office? Well, I mean, well, they traded me one time. You're referring to the CB3 trade. Yeah, I didn't think I was ever going to trade it. Because you won six man of the year the year before, right? Yeah. So you're there in LA, you know, with your wife, like you're, you're chilling. Mm-hmm. Got then, the reality show. You got in season. Chloe and Lamar. So they, let me, they let me do that. I'm thinking I'm good forever here. Crazy. So you hear well, You can that- never really let... And this for all the um, uh, the younger athletes. You can never let your personal relationship with the organization involve you and your business with the organization. 
Because at any given time, that shit can change. And they won't blink. In a second, yeah. They'll probably give you your plane ticket. <laughs> it's like you have this little diamond, but you have a bigger one. You can always go and get that. You know what I mean? So people always say just that, get though, caught it's up business. in get caught up in your feelings. I got caught up in living in L.A. the L.A. lifestyle. Was king of L.A. for a second. It happens. So what exactly happened? Because they traded me. <laughs> I'm saying, but well, what happened after that trade? Like you were blindsided. You hear that the Lakers want the Lakers are trading you in, mm-hmm. in a CP3 trade out of nowhere, but it didn't go through. So why did you still get traded? Like what happened with you in the GM? Oh, um, I forgot. I think I wanted to be traded after that. I think you like you said you. Got I was a, like, yeah, fucking trade me, yeah, 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 trade me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I got, you regret I got, that? Yeah, I got my feelings. So you regret that though. You wish you didn't. Hundred percent. That was a bad move because it fucked me up mentally. But I was already fucked up mentally. You're Think saying my, from life? It, yeah, my cousin just passed away too. Oh, really? That yeah, at got that killed. time? Yeah. So, you know, I think that's why I, I thought the Lakers wouldn't trade me too because my cousin just got killed. And what I went through with the Lakers because my son died when I was playing with the Lakers. Right. See, again, I'm letting the personal shit involve in business. But it's easier and, said than done. You and know? They, yeah, and their business, they like they people are like fuck. it's a business. By the end of the day, like you, you, you go to like you travel with these guys, you yeah. build relationships with the coach, with the yeah. GM, and then all of a sudden you're getting traded. So I get it, I get it. it is a business, but like at the end of the day, you're a human. I'm saying NBA players are are human. Like they have feelings, and all of a sudden you think everything is going for you, and then boom, we don't we see someone else better for this team. Yeah. Like you know, but yeah, that's kind of it's crazy. And was that Mitch? Clubjack that traded you? Yeah. Damn, bro. It's crazy. I mean, like you said, I mean, take it as a lesson, like mm-hmm. for you know, in life, and for also for the younger players, like well, it's a business. So everything we're gonna every time, you know, we're gonna wrap up an episode. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna show you a highlight from your career, and I just want you to take me through it and like, you know, explain it. A highlight from a highlight. my career. Wow. So this, is, so this is a highlight. Oh, this is the freak me, right? Yeah. This 2011 right here. What did you say there? Do you remember? I don't know, but I, this was, um, I was extra confident. This, this part of the year, this part of the season, this was like the beginning of the year. This was like 2011. I got the, I think, let me see, go back to it. You, you The play started off with you getting blocked. Okay, yeah. So, and Quincy Pondex is my young boy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and I got Kobe on the break with me, so I I know I went behind my back. I know he's thinking I'm gonna go to Kobe. Of course. So at the last time, minute, I just said, let me just lay this up, and then wherever it end up, I'm just gonna finish it. <laughs> it was so clean, bro. Yeah, it was I'm so just smooth. gonna I'm just gonna finish it. I remember I was 12 years old when I watched that, and I was like thinking, like, did he try? Like, and it's so crazy because I don't really like in my career. I think I, as much as I finished in the lane. I would have been labeled a superstar if I'd just turned, if I'd have dunked the ball a little right. bit more. You know what I mean? So they were flashy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that 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 play. I think I kind of it kind of surprised me because I know him really dunk. I mean, it was called Lamar Razzle Dazzle. Yeah, I know the, you, you played like who were you playing? Wasn't the NBA? Yeah, like you were playing. I think LeBron was oh, in that game. You that were like was a, crazy. Yeah, that was like, that was on the record. You know, the record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Summertime tournament. Yeah, bro. We knew you yeah. had it in there, but that's a wrap. Really, season I really, two. I don't really dunk the ball a lot, so. I kind of surprised myself right there. It's great to be back. Thank you for tuning in. As always, subscribe. Lamar, tell them to subscribe, bro. Subscribe, bro. We're coming for the number one spot. We're coming for that number one spot. Need you to subscribe. (laughs)